now my immense pleasure to announce our next, not only speech, it's an entire section with uh, Helen Thorpe, as well as Yves Laris Cohen and Heta and Patel. This section actually has a lot to do with something that's also going to happen tomorrow. We will have Martin Rees. We hope you can all come to his talk tomorrow, the scientist. Um, and in our program booklet, as you can all see, he reminds us that we humans are about one step in an ongoing evolutionary chain. Technology may well play a part in the development of our post-human context. Yet the possibility of human extinction is at the doorstep, as Gustav told us many times, and is of our own making. This kind of impasse demands that we redefine our relationship, not only uh, with the world, but also with our own movement and embodied selves as well as with our avatars, something which played a big role this summer with the exhibitions of Marina Abramovic and Ed Atkins, which happened in the Serpentine Gallery and the Serpentine Sacre Gallery. The participants of tonight's section all bring together a deep concern with movement and also the elements that constitute our political, our social, and also our embodied identity. Yves Laris Cohen and Hector Patel will both perform. They both are holding key experience in the dance, choreography, and movement world, as well as also in the visual and performance arts. Mette Ingvarsson, unfortunately, cannot be with us today because of illness, but she will do her performance later this winter as a uh, solo project. So we wish Mette a very speedy recovery, and I would like to foremost here acknowledge the person who made all of this possible, and that is the filmmaker, writer, and philanthropist, Helen Thorpe, who is also the inventor and founder of the Helen Randack Charitable Foundation. Julia Peyton Johns, Jochen Waltz, and I began talking several years ago with Helen about the new space here, the Serpentine Sacra Gallery, its new program, and how actually to bring in dance and choreography as an important part of the program. It's been a very, very exciting journey, uh, these conversations, and we look very much forward to many more steps. Of course, we already know what's the next one. That will be Mette. Uh, and we could not be more grateful to Helen for this wonderful dialogue. We would also like to acknowledge uh, Alistair Spalding, director of Sadler's Wells, as well as uh, Eva Mortner, uh, his curator for the collaboration in the programming of this section. And of course, also thank Alice Rothorn for the wonderful introduction. Alice will tomorrow be in dialogue here with Irma Boom. Please give a very, very, very warm welcome to Helen Thorpe. wonderful to be here today for the marathon and to introduce this dedicated section that considers dance, choreography and the body as it relates to the constellation of ideas that surround the topic of extinction. This moment today has been part of an ongoing dialogue between Hans Ulrich, Julia and I about the significance of this discipline to the realms of art, architecture, music and film. Indeed, it is the true spirit of the marathon to bring together the many disciplines and knowledge bases out there so that they may enter into conversation with one another rather than existing as independent and segregated categories. Particularly important to this conversation is the inclusion of dance and choreography within the context of the museum and the necessity there that it finds a permanent home. The sense of liveness that is embodied within the medium is relevant to my own practice as a filmmaker. It was David Lynch who said that film is the new total work of art. And I would like us to consider dance in a similar light, a new yet all-encompassing art form. As Hans Ulrich mentioned, this section today is an inauguration of relationship between the serpentine and dance that I hope will continue. I'm so glad to welcome both Eve Laris Cohen and Hatane Patel here today, artists who are changing the perception and definitions of what constitutes contemporary dance and choreography today. Many thanks to both Hans Ulrich and Julia, and a very warm welcome to Eve and Hatane.
Oh, do we have an image, please? Thank you. This is uh, the new museum in New York City. This is a subterranean white box theater slash auditorium. It has 182 seats that can disappear if need be. This theater was included in the new museum's new building design, which was commissioned in 2002. Sajima and Nishizawa and Associates, or SANA, designed the building. It opened December 1st, 2007. This is a balcony view in the William and Nadine McGuire Theater at the Walker Arts Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It is a, quote, 21st century jewel box-like opera house, end quote. It has 385 seats. The Walker commissioned Herzog and Demeron to design the theater in 1999 as part of a large museum expansion. Construction concluded in 2005. The Walker calls the space a, quote, unique interpretation of the classic black box theater. Black box is in additional quotes. This is the tanks at Tate Modern here in London. Construction began on this underground concrete space in January 2010. Herzog and Demeron designed this, quote, unique raw industrial space to display large-scale artist installations, as well as performances and film, end quote. Upon opening to the public on the 18th of July, 2012, Tate Modern described the three tanks' functions as follows, quote, Tank One will be programmed with changing displays, exhibitions, and radical commissions of contemporary art. Tank Two will be used for performances and events, complementing the display program in Tank One. Supporting facilities such as green rooms will be located in Tank Three, end quote. This is a dance by Anna Teresa de Kiersmacher. Sound, please. Good morning, I'm Anna Maria Tremonti, and you're listening to The Current. This is the studio at the Centre Pompidou Metz. It was constructed along with the rest of the building. Shigeru Ban won the design contest for the building in 2003. Nicolas Sarkozy inaugurated the building on May 12, 2010. <coughs> the studio is dedicated to live events and can, quote, accommodate a conference, cocktail party, or gala dinner, end quote. It is 370 square meters and has retractable bleachers. The space fits between 196 and 250 people seated for a conference, up to 300 people standing for a reception, or 200 people seated for a dinner. It is available to rent Monday through Friday. But perhaps not beacons that burn as brightly as they once did, because some worry the number of butch lesbians is dwindling. And here's why they're worried. Gender transition surgery is more accessible than ever. It varies among provinces, but Ontario, for example, began paying for the surgery again five years ago. What was once prohibitively expensive for many is now a more realistic option, and that is having unexpected effects. We'll explore them, but first, to get a better understanding of who is seeking the procedure and why, I'm joined by Kai Lin Shuka, who is a college student transitioning from female to male. Kai is with me in our Toronto studio. Hello. Nine days ago, I was in a bicycle accident and sustained a head injury. Last weekend, I didn't leave my apartment and watch the entire 1984 season of Murder, She Wrote. This episode was the only one I was able to solve within the first few minutes. It was the corps de ballet dancer. This is me participating in an experimental neurological study in the Bellevue Hospital emergency room. In exchange for 50 US dollars, I was given the choice of watching either Puss in Boots or The Lion King. The researchers encouraged me to select Puss in Boots because I am a dancer. 
These are my eyes. This is a rendering of the, quote, versatile double height white box space, end quote, that will be included in the San Francisco Museum of Modern Arts expansion project. White box is in additional quotes. The white box space will be on the fourth floor. SF MoMA announced plans to expand in 2009, closed for construction in 2013, and will reopen in 2016. Snowheda designed the expansion. The rendering's caption includes the words flexible, adapt, and accommodate, all in one sentence. As more women transition, it has been felt in the wider lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender or LGBT community. Nancy Irwin of Toronto calls herself a leather femme dyke, and she says she's noticed a dramatic change. We call butches dinosaurs these days and joke that there's only three of them left. While that may not be entirely true, there has been a remarkable number of women who want to be called he, who want to become male, who transition, have chest surgery, take testosterone, grow beards, and are very, very happy to become men or some form of man. And what this has done is meant there's a dwindling number of butches because the women on the masculine side have been becoming even more masculine to the point that they are passing as men. This is a Diller, Scafidio, and Renfro rendering of the Museum of Modern Art expansion project as seen from 53rd Street. In place of the former American Folk Art Museum will be a ground level art bay. This will be a quote, flexible space for exhibitions and performances similar to the courtyard at MoMA PS1, end quote. Above the art bay will be the gray box, which will connect to the museum's fourth level. The gray box is, quote, so named because it combines the attributes of a white box gallery with a black box performance space. It would have acoustic absorption panels to accommodate the museum's growing interest in performance art, and its interior would be visible from the street, end quote. MoMA announced its, its expansion in 2013. Construction will be completed in 2018 or 2019. Nancy Irwin says she is very supportive of those who transition, but she does have worries. There is also a lot of pressure for people to be butcher than they are, more masculine, more butch, to take testosterone, to have surgery, and to become this version of men. And that leaves the women often standing around wondering what's so bad about being a woman. And it leaves some of us feeling minimized, both in numbers and in our culture. Well, this is a sensitive subject raising difficult questions for many women who identify as butch. Many feel they're part of a disappearing subculture. This is an east-facing view of the theater and the Whitney Museum of American Art's new building under construction. Paula Court took this photograph on the 28th of March, 2014. In addition to this theater, the Renzo Piano Design Building will have a, quote, multi-use black box theater for film, video, and performance with an adjacent outdoor gallery, end quote. The theater pictured here will have retractable risers with 170 seats. The walls will be gray and lined with acoustic panels. The third floor theater has, quote, stunning views of the Hudson River, end quote. This is me performing in my failed project in the Whitney Biennial. This is the wall label on the wall I was pushing in the previous slide. This is the first iteration of the wall label before Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, was redacted from the text. OSHA is a federal agency of the United States Department of Labor. OSHA's mission is to, quote, assure safe and healthful working conditions for working men and women by setting and enforcing standards and by providing training, outreach, education, and assistance, end quote. OSHA regulations are in place to protect workers only. They do not apply to patrons, consumers, visitors, or audiences. Performers are not subject to OSHA codes when they are classified as independent contractors or freelancers. 
I have never been anything but an independent contractor while performing in my lifetime. This is not by choice. This is OSHA. It is a perennial medicinal plant native to the North American Rocky Mountain regions above 8,000 feet in the Western United States. OSHA is a slow growing herb that can take up to 10 years to reach harvestable mass in the wild. It is used within herbalism to treat upper respiratory tract cold and flu symptoms. OSHA root can be used internally in small amounts to treat heartburn. If consumed in excess, OSHA can be a powerful stimulant. The roots must be dried before chewing as their astringent properties are very strong when fresh and can cause blistering of the mouth and mucous membranes. Poison hemlock, which, which grows in the same regions at lower elevations, can be mistaken for OSHA. Hemlock poisoning causes paralysis of the central and peripheral nervous systems, and death is usually the result of respiratory failure. OSHA is currently endangered due to overharvesting. The OSHA plant's Latin name is Liguisticum porteri. An online dictionary search for Liguisticum porteri yielded Occupational Safety and Health Administration. This is a Thir Sherwood Auditorium at the Museum of Contemporary Art San Diego in La Jolla. I was born in San Diego. It was designed by Robert Mosier and built in 1959 as part of a large museum renovation. The 500-seat auditorium will be demolished as part of MCASD's upcoming expansion. The Sherwood will be converted into gallery space. Director Hugh Davies said in July 2013, quote, our mission is the display, interpretation, and preservation of contemporary art. It's not primarily to operate a theater or performance hall, and we don't use it. Maybe we use it half a dozen times a year, so it's a very inefficient use of very expensive real estate." End quote. MCASD plans to build a smaller 200-seat auditorium in a space to the north of the museum under what is now a staff parking lot. The only images I could find of the Sherwood Auditorium online were these thumbnails on a now defunct wedding page. This is a seating chart for the house of the Sherwood Auditorium. This is another seating chart for the Sherwood. This is the Ravel Chamber Music Series seating chart for the Sherwood. This is an unidentified seating chart for the Sherwood. Thank you. Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, esteemed members of the Extinction Committee, citizens of America, and citizens of the world. I receive this honor with deep gratitude and great humility. It is an honor that speaks to our highest aspirations and for all the cruelty and hardships of our world. We are not mere prisoners of fate. Our actions matter and can bend history in the directions of justice. In addition to my place as the Commander-in-Chief of the military, 
as the President of the United States of America. Tonight, I accept a new post that you have bestowed upon me as the new head of Apple Inc. <laughs> and it would be a lie if I did not admit that I'm excited about this prospect. I'm very excited. Very, very excited. In fact, I feel rather, ow! And somewhat, ooh! And yet I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the considerable controversy that your generous decision has generated. But my critics will ask how it is that I will juggle these multiple roles. To them I ask, do we not all, on a day-to-day -day basis, embody multiple roles, multiple personalities even? And these roles do not hinder, but rather help strengthen our resolve, shape our character. But I am not only the Commander-in-Chief of the military, of the nation. I'm also a father, a husband, a friend. And these roles are not separate. They fall under the same banner. They are under but one name, my name, my name, my name. My name, my <clears throat> name, my, my name is Maximus Decimus Ridius, commander of the armies of the north, general of the Felix legions, loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius, husband to a murdered wife, father to a murdered son, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. I have to go deep undercover. I'm undercover deep now, this deep. I have to go deeper. Now, I want no more money, but I need to go deep, 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 deep undercover. You signed up for me, I'm gonna go so deep, sir, you not even know where people try to pay, like, actually, I'll be, no answer, because I'll be deep undercover. <laughs> Akeem, is there something troubling you, my son? <laughs> Akeem, please. I am more than the exalted ruler of this land, a master of all I survey. I'm also a concerned dad. <laughs> People may ask, why Apple? <laughs> well, I come here today with an acute sense of the costs the technological advancement has on our environment. And I'm filled with questions about our efforts to place one with the other. Now, I believe the presidential leadership of Apple will provide my office with the structures, with the help to work toward and with our commitment to the environment. And what better way, what better flag to fly for the future of organic future than one which holds literally the symbol of fruit, the apple. The future is bright. The future is orange. But mainly, the future is apple. Orange apple. Perhaps we can even make our titles organic. Now we here at Apple Orange will eradicate the use of physical matter in our computing systems. 
We'll do away with plastics, with metals. We will not need hardware to hold our digital data, our digital data, 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 tomato, tomato. <laughs> Are we here at apple, orange, tomato, tomato? <laughs> we'll eradicate the need for the computer screen, for the hard drive, the flash drive. We'll no longer need the microchip, dip, guacamole, or hummus. And though we will believe in the right or enjoyment of guacamole and hummus, we can perhaps find a better way to have them. We have found a way to reorganize the organic matter in the human brain, the organic matter in the human being that will allow us to hold, to store, to process all the digital material that we have previously had in our computers. The power of the human mind. And we in our office, myself, my staff, have already uploaded to ourselves the first iteration of this new app, this new application, which is the successor to iMovie. We're calling it B-Movie 2.0. <laughs> it allows us to hold within our bodies entire film history. Hollywood. Imagine a future where we no longer watch movies. We no longer visit the movie theater. Instead, we will be the movie. We will become, embody the characters. We will understand the characters' plight more deeply will take on the spatial awareness of the scene. We will even smell the environment around the actors. This will be great. We are not naive. We understand that different countries, different continents, have different needs. We'll have different versions. After the American version, We'll first roll out the Euro European version. Because as we all know, in Europe, things are a little funny. In Europe, things are a little funny. But you know what the funniest thing about Europe is? You see the little differences. I mean, they have the same shit over there that we have over here, right? Only over there, it's just, it's just a little different. Example, well, all right, you can walk into a movie theater in Amsterdam and you can buy a beer. I don't mean no paper cup, I'm talking about a glass of beer. And at McDonald's, you can buy a beer in Paris, or the other way around. And do you know what they call a quarter pounder with cheese in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? Oh, no, man, they got the metric system. They wouldn't know what a fucking quarter pounder is. What do they call it? Call it a, a Royale with cheese. <laughs> Royale with cheese. What do they call a Big Mac? Well, a Big Mac's a Big Mac, but they call it Le Big Mac. A Le Big Mac. Uh, ah, ah. What do they call a Whopper? And beyond Europe, <clears throat> we already have for the iPhone different color covers. We not only have the white and the black, we now have the brown and the yellow. We roll out the same procedure with iMovie 2.0. And that ought to do it. <clears throat> that ought to do it. Now hear your names, Mr. Brown, Mr. White, 
Mr. Blonde, Mr. Blue, Mr. Orange, or Mr. Pink. Now, what after Mr. Pink? Because you're a fagger, all right? So why can't we pick our own colors? No way, no way. I tried it once before, it doesn't work. You get four guys all fighting over who's going to be Mr. Black. And they don't know each other, so nobody wants to back down. No way, I pick. And you're Mr. Pink. I'd be thankful you're not Mr. Yellow. Your Mr. Brown is a little too close to Mr. Shit. Your Mr. Pink is like Mr. Pussy. How about if I'm, how about if I'm Mr. Purple? Yeah, that sounds good to me, I'll be Mr. Purple. You're not Mr. Purple. Some other guy or some other job is Mr. Purple. You're Mr. Pink. Who cares what your name is anyway? Yeah, that's easy for you to say. You're Mr. White. You have a cool sounding name. All right, if it's no big deal, you want to trade? Hey! Nobody's trading with anybody. This ain't a goddamn fucking city council meeting, you know. Now listen here, Mr. Pink. There's two ways to go about this job. My way or the highway. Now, what's it to be, Mr. Pink? Jesus Christ, Joe, fucking forget about it. It's beneath me. I'm Mr. Pink. Let's move on. I'll move on when I feel like it. <clears throat> All this goddamn howling at you guys, I can hardly talk. Now, let's get to work. In conclusion, can we get to work? Yes, we can. Can we innovate post Steve Jobs? Yes, we can. Can we move this digital era of the device into the organic revolution of the body? Yes, we can. Thank you.